near Courthouse Square. Amy Clark is live at Waterfront Park. Karina Allen is live in Jet Ranger 2 above the march. We begin with the protesters and their confrontations with police. At one point, protesters interrupted the flow of traffic on the east side of the Morrison Bridge. As state troopers moved in, a Portland police vehicle makes its way down the ramp amid demonstrators. Watch the man in black at the bottom of your screen. He blocks the vehicle's path, gets bumped by it, then steps back in front of it and gets knocked down as the vehicle pushes ahead. You can see other protesters running to get in front of the SUV, slowing its travel along the ramp. Some even push against the hood. They start to form a human blockade in front of the SUV. A couple protesters wave their flags in the windshield. An officer on foot patrol pushes the group away from the hood as the vehicle continues to clear a path for other motorists behind it. Minutes later, a black tide of police and riot gear pace the protesters away from the east end of the Morrison, back toward downtown. But this isn't without some pushing and shoving either. Watch at the top of your screen as one officer repeatedly uses his baton to send a message to one protester to step back. And despite these confrontations caught on tape, police say the bulk of the demonstration went peacefully. They report at least one arrest for rioting from what they call a splinter group, people not associated with the main peace demonstration. K2's Karina Allen is live in Jet Ranger 2 with more on today's protest. Karina? Well, Anna, as you mentioned a moment ago, they were hoping for 30,000 demonstrators, and if they didn't get that, they sure came close. Taking a look at some of the pictures from earlier, you can see the march was led by this bright yellow banner saying, the world says no to war. It was also closely followed by a lively drum corps that you could see in white, and right there is a chalk message that was added later on saying, stop genocide. And behind them, you can see the sparse crowds, but beyond that, you can see right there, it was a very large crowd that just filled the downtown streets. Of course, today's march also coincided with several St. Patrick's Day celebrations, so that probably added to the crowds. Also worth noting, as Dan mentioned, these folks were completely separate from the protesters up on the Morrison Bridge earlier. They passed underneath that bridge, completely ignoring the clashes with police up above. Up above downtown Portland in Jet Ranger 2, Karina Allen, K2 News. And today's events began at 2 o'clock with a massive peace rally at Waterfront Park. K2's Paul Bugda and Amy Clark were there. Amy, what can you tell us about the rally? Well, as you can see behind me, Anna, people are still out here three hours after this rally started. It was a pretty incredible experience. Early estimates indicate between 20 and 30,000 people actually showed up today, and people started coming down here to Waterfront Park around 1230 this afternoon. I want to show you a sign here. There were several thousand signs that were being demonstrated today. This one is one of those signs. It says 3,000 bombs and 5 million people in Baghdad equals terrorism. This sign was actually made by a 13 year old girl. So all different types of people, all different sizes and all different ages. We saw even babies out here today. For the most part, organizers say this was a peaceful demonstration despite the one disturbance. Thousands of anti-war activists stood shoulder to shoulder in Portland's Waterfront Park Sunday. As pro-peace speakers one by one denounced military action against Iraq. Oregon Congressman Earl Blumenauer introduced keynote speaker and civil rights activist John Lewis. And you need to know that there is no voice more powerful than yours about what is right and wrong and the direction of this country. The war destroyed people's dreams, their hopes and aspirations. War killed people. It is better to love than to hate. Demonstrators eventually took to the streets. Bonnie Tinker has attended most of the war rallies in Portland and says this is the largest turnout she's ever seen. I've never seen anything like this in Portland, but then we've never had anything like this happen before where our president was trying to take us into war without the support of the United Nations or the people of the United States. Roads were temporarily blocked as protesters made their way through downtown Portland. Buses were rerouted and the MAX was delayed. Soon after the march started, police say a fringe group of radical activists stopped traffic on the Morrison Bridge. Portland police, dressed in riot gear, quickly stepped in to disperse the crowd. 
really fortunate to have a lot of folks here who are trained in nonviolence and nonviolent negotiation. I was just up talking with the police and we had a really great conversation. You know, clearly we don't want to block traffic. We don't want problems here today. Now, the permit that organizers of this rally got actually ends at 6 o'clock, so it looks like they have just about an hour here. And as you can see, it's a very different scene now than it was just a few hours ago. As we know at this point, there was one arrest, possibly more. We will give you that information as it becomes available. But for now, so far, it looks as though it's been pretty peaceful out here today. Reporting live in downtown Portland, Amy Clark, K2 News. And as Amy touched on, today's peace rally in March drew people of different backgrounds, ages, and religious beliefs, but they all had one thing in common today, the plea for peace. K2's Paul Bukta continues our team coverage from Pioneer Courthouse Square. Paul? Well, traffic along Broadway has returned to normal, but it wasn't long ago that thousands and thousands of people were marching down this street. In fact, we estimated that it took an hour and a half for them to all pass by. As for your typical protester, there really wasn't one as they took to the streets on this March 15th for the Strides of March. The signs show many different messages, but all the same theme, no war. Like the signs, protesters represent all walks. And I'd like to send a message to the administration that there are a lot of Americans who really feel it's the wrong way to go. Diplomacy with the other nations and, and how we're kind of just kind of going about our own way unilaterally instead of working through the United Nations and other countries that are our friends and allies. Damage done to the allies, the damage that are done to civilians, um, you know, and just the damage that's going to be done to the economy. Among some protesters, we even found some holding the red, white, and bleu, the French flag. And in my opinion, I think that France's actions today are intended to help us. They're looking out for our best interests, although we don't know it. Some wore their messages across their stomachs, and others wore nothing at all. And then you get this. Well, just who's mad? He doesn't want to go to war, you know? No blood for oil. People show, you know, folks with uh, you know, costumes on and that kind of thing protesting, but not just us regular old suburban folks. The cost to the economy, because they haven't been broadcasting it, and I don't, I want to know what it is. From youth to experience, we also found people like George Feindling. He's been there, now he's done this. World War II, and I remember the Depression very, very well. And, uh... I think we should learn by our mistakes, so supposedly. And we had heard of a few minor incidents, but for the most part, when we were walking with protesters, they were very polite and courteous. At one point, we even saw protesters linking arms so the MAX train could pass through. Then they let some of the protesters go along their way. Pretty incredible when you consider that there were 30,000 people here on the streets of Portland. Live in Pioneer Courthouse Square, Paul Book to K2 News. Among the thousands of peace activists, a few Portlanders offered another point of view. K2's Kim Broccoli caught up with some pro-war demonstrators. She joins us now with more on their perspective. Kim? Well, Anna, Dan, they may not have been as visible, but we found a handful of pro-war activists at today's rally. They say they don't like war, but believe it's necessary. I'm this, your question. This is my statement. Okay. Surrounded by thousands of peace activists, a Vietnam veteran makes a silent statement with a sign that says it all. I'm um, disgusted with the way the anti-war movement went in Vietnam. Nobody supported our troops. And so I'm here to support the war and support our troops. So Amid the sea of anti-war protesters, a few bold Portlanders offer another point of view. I've been... Uh, Intimidated verbally as well as spat on, but uh, nothing physical. Carrying a sign saying, Bomb Iraq Now, Chris McNellis bravely walks through downtown. I just intend to peacefully speak my mind, just as um, Americans in history have fought for to give us these rights to do so. I agree with you 100%. I agree with you. We need to take care of this right now. We do. It's time. Yep, thank you. But for every supporter, there are plenty of people against his point of view. There's never a noble right. war. I don't like war either, but you've got to take care of it. It's a problem. They may be on different sides of the issue, but that doesn't mean they can't get along. I just wanted to give you a hug, man. Hug, right. You look like you needed a hug. It'll all be okay. It'll Several pro-troop rallies scheduled for tomorrow. The first is from noon.